by 1303. Moscow controlled land that encompassed the entire flow of the Moskva River. Its ambitions didn't end there. Moscow continued to expand its borders through its wealth rather than warfare. Its tactic was to buy land from bankrupt rulers, acquiring entire towns and villages in the process. As Moscow was still a vassal of the mighty Mongol Empire, it had to send envoys to pay them tribute. And Moscow's ever-expanding borders meant more and more revenue for the Mongols. But not everyone was content with the rise of Moscow. As Moscow grew in power and influence, its grand prince, Dmitry Ivanovich, reinforced its vulnerable defenses. Its wooden fortress, the Kremlin, was rebuilt. This time, in stone. But even stone walls didn't deter its enemies. By 1368, Lithuania saw rapidly expanding Moscow as a real threat. Joining forces with the Principality of Tver, they set out to challenge its dominance. They attacked Moscow. But the stone walls held, and the enemy retreated. Tension between the factions refused to die down. In 1370, Moscow marched on territories belonging to both Tver and Lithuania, igniting a full-blown war. Years of bloody conflict ensued, until Moscow's Grand Prince Dmitry Ivanovich finally defeated both enemies. Yet Moscow was still a vassal of the Mongol Empire, which still demanded tribute. Moscow must keep up the payments, or face retribution. Trade routes between Rus settlements supported a vibrant economy, which in turn allowed Moscow to pay forward tribute to the Golden Horde. If Moscow was to avoid a Mongol attack, Dmitry would have to meet the Horde's tribute demands before the Khan's patience expired. Moscow's primary means of raising the taxes demanded by the Horde was through trade with nearby Rus towns. But Prince Dmitry would have to keep his traders safe from raids by opportunistic bandits that stalked the countryside. While Moscow's trade was strong, Dmitry could bolster his income if he could locate additional trade partners. Радуйся. 
Alicia. Trade routes brought wealth, but safe passage was not a given with bandits stalking the roads. Работа ждет. Начну трудитесь. Слушайте. Increasing Moscow's income required locating additional trade partners. To do so, the Muscovites needed to scout the land in search of new settlements. Мне нравится. Чего делать и надо, бля? Построено будет. Рады есть. Садник готов. Сделано будет. Напряж по скору. Уразумех. As the deadline for payment of tribute approached, Dmitri had to quicken his efforts to collect the necessary taxes. Hey, 
With the Golden Horde paid, the Muscovites could concentrate on expanding their territory until the next payment was due. The village of Kalin was ready to trade with Moscow. But more traders on the roads meant an increased threat of bandit raids. As Moscow grew in riches, the Khan continued to demand taxes. If Dmitri did not pay, he would face the swift vengeance of the Horde. As Prince Dmitri sought to increase Moscow's power, he turned from trading with his neighbors to purchasing their lands outright. If he owned the surrounding lands, Moscow would be the dominant center of Rus' power, and Dmitri would be secure as Grand Prince. Жаловайтесь, нельзя. По скору. Ладно, есть. Брань будет. Приближайтесь, а поизливи. Наказ и наказ есть. Oh, 
Слушайте все. Уразумеем. Будем сражаться! Рад есть! Приготовляйтесь, ватницы! Приближайтесь, поязливые! Так это прежь войне! Возрода и готов есть. Наказом следую. Какови накази суть? Без сомнения! А? Ладно, есть. Слушайте, жаловайтесь нельзя. Будем сражаться! Чего делать надо мной? Kerislev welcomed Dmitry's envoys and the coming of Muscovite traders. When Dmitri's men located Vladimir, they opened another revenue stream for the Grand Prince. Ну, трудитесь. Ворог, блин, стоит! The small settlement at Pereslav welcomed Muscovite scouts and the prospect of trade. Thank <laughs> you. 
настроена есть, ладно. The Khan once again demanded taxes from the growing Rus provinces. But this time, the price to keep the horde at bay was higher than ever before. Muscovite scouts located the town of Sustel and trade could begin. Будете воине. Будем сражаться! Меня поражает! Возьмите готовицу! Каснов. Да, Брать завет! На казино суть. Слушайте все. Вор, близ стоит! Будем сражаться! Слушай на Каснов. Готов 
Ждем. Приближайтесь, обоязливи! Слушайте все! Стреляем! Враг наверх! Борцы, яко делайте! Поражаю! Слушай на касну! Будем сражаться! Трудитесь, а есть. Dmitry purchased the lands of Troitsky and extended Moscow's power. Moscow's power over the region was now secure. Moscow's power grew as it absorbed the lands around Kolumma. Moscow's power over the region was now secure. The Rus of Kalin now recognized Dmitry as their grand prince. Moscow's power over the region was now secure. surrounding principalities under Dmitry's sway, Moscow was now the preeminent power among the Rus. The time was coming to throw off the Mongol yoke. 